Yeah, now we're talking back to work, back to work. Now, that's what we're talking about. Great job today. I know a lot of you guys made some money today, so well done on that. Now, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but the charts tonight, we're not, they're not as easy as they were last night. Our job tomorrow might be a little more difficult than it was today. That's all right, though. I got a pretty good game plan tonight. If we play our cards right for tomorrow, we play these cards well tomorrow, we might be able to double our profits to finish up the week and kickstart the month of March with some more green this week. We'll We'll talk about why I say double our profits. We'll cover my favorite trades, as always, in the video tonight. By the time we're done tonight, you'll have an easy roadmap to make some money tomorrow. Now, before we jump in and talk about my favorite trades for tomorrow, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Hopefully, by now, you realize you don't want to miss tomorrow night's video, so make sure you subscribe. And if you like these lessons, if you enjoy these videos, hit that like button for me. Give me a shout out. Give me a hell yeah down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for tuning in, supporting the channel. Enough of the intro. It's been a fantastic week. We got one more day left, kicking off the brand new month of March tomorrow. Now, charts are all ready. NASDAQ triple Qs are ready. I got the S&P and the SPY ready as well. Now, there are four clues that are telling us where the best winning trades are going to be for tomorrow. One of the clues is right in front of us on this 60-minute chart, and that is this bullish overall bias. Anytime I see a 60-minute bullish overall bias, I know the best odds of success are going to be on the buy side tomorrow. I do have some reversal trades tomorrow, though, so we might mix it up a little bit tonight in the video, but that's one very important clue. Now, there are three more important clues, much more important than these clues, three more important clues on the tick charts, which we'll cover here in a moment. Before we dive into the tick charts, though, and talk about those three additional clues and talk entries for tomorrow, let's double check our schedule for tomorrow because there are three important things you want to have on your radar for tomorrow. First things first, China news overnight. Tonight at about 8 p.m. Eastern time, we'll have the Chinese PMI numbers being released overnight. It's tough to tell how much that will affect the market, but be aware if you're watching charts here in the Asian session. Tomorrow, second thing to be aware of is the ISM manufacturing index at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Definitely not as big as the personal income number we saw this morning, that's for sure, but it's definitely something I'm watching for tomorrow. And Remember, anytime we see 10 o'clock news, big red star news at 10 o'clock, you want to be paying attention. Oftentimes, our best trades come between that 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock hour. And the third thing for tomorrow is tomorrow's a Friday. Tomorrow is the end of the week, and Fridays have a different mindset. Now, why do I say that? Well, first of all, as the day gets older on a Friday, we are not at our best, and the markets are not at their best, right? We tend to make poor decisions late in the day on Friday, and the markets get illiquid into the end of the day on Friday. So my Friday mindset, we call this in our trade room, is to get into trades early, remove risk early, take a bit of profit early, lock up some gains, and leave a runner into the afternoon. One thing we always try to do on Fridays is leave a little piece to run because traders take bigger risks on Friday afternoon. So be aware of that news from China overnight. The big news tomorrow, the ISM manufacturing index, and again, that Friday mindset early in take some profit, lock up some gains, and leave those runners into the close on Friday. Now, back to our charts, though. It's good to know when the news is, but we know the money is made on the charts. We talked about, I've got four important clues tonight that are telling us where the best money-making trades are tomorrow. One of those clues is on the 60-minute time frame, that bullish overall directional bias. Now, let's drill down to our tick charts, because there are three more, I think, more important clues on the tick charts here. Let's do that now here on the S&P first, and we'll move over to the NASDAQ here as soon as possible. This is a 7,000 tick chart. You'll see there, kids, in the upper left-hand corner. And if you're watching for the first time right now, that yellow line right there, that is the 21 EMA, in case you're tuning in for the first time. There are three important clues on this tick chart that kind of bring it all together, and they really tell us that although our job may not be as easy tomorrow, I think if we play 
play our cards right here. We might be able to double our profits here with some range reversals. First big clue on the tick chart is a big move higher. If you've been watching the videos this week, you know we've been talking about this all week. Had that big, big run up, that big NVIDIA run. Ever since we had that big move up, we've been waiting for that two-legged pullback and that retest of the high. The buyers have one thing on their mind right now. They want to go back and take out those big NVIDIA earnings highs at 51.23 half on the S&P. Similar, of course, on the NASDAQ. Second clue is a news spike. Anytime we have a strong spike off of the news, we can use the size of that spike as a measuring spike. And you'll notice right away, we've already completed our measured move spike that is big time overhead resistance. Keep that in your mind. Third clue is range rotation. Range, well, what? Range rotation. We talk a lot about this in our free video classes. Anytime we see a trading range on the chart, we know the amount below the range can be projected now above the range, and that also creates overhead resistance. Now, think about this. We are an overall bull market on the 60-minute time frame, right? Bullish overall but we're running into measured move resistance, running into rotation resistance. We are right off the high of that big NVIDIA earnings high. We're bullish overall, but buyers have to be very careful to buy as low as they can. What that means is there's buying opportunities with bear traps going lower, and there's probably some selling opportunities with some bull traps going higher. I think we play our cards right tomorrow. We might be able to double dip this market, buying low, selling high, and we'll talk about some range reversals here. So first things first, I want to talk about if we go higher. There's a lot of opportunities if we go back and take out those highs here. We'll talk about some breakouts. We'll talk about some reversals. I got some great trades I'm tracking if we go higher here. And later on in the lesson, we'll talk about if we go lower because there's just as many ways, probably three different ways to buy this thing as it goes lower. So let's buckle up, take some notes. Any questions, drop those questions in the comment section below. And let's talk about this. Now, as we go higher, if I want to short this thing back down again, what's my problem? My problem is momentum, right? We're all bullish overall and we're bullish in the short term. So if I want to be a seller off the high, there are two types of entry patterns I look for. Both of them are going to try to trap in rookie buyers, right? This is a horrible spot to be buying. We don't want to buy into those recent all-time highs. So if I can get up top here and see some buyers coming in, right? These are rookie buyers, right? These are not experienced buyers. Right? Experienced buyers are buying low right now. We'll look to buy low later on in this lesson as well. However, remember, we're overall bullish, so I need to trap the buyers in and use their exits, their stops to fuel this move going lower. Now, I know a lot of you guys know these already. These are called crown reversal patterns. Look how this pattern sets up. This would be in the free video classes, we call these failure patterns, right? It's a one one try for the bulls, two try for the bulls, lower low in price, and a move just a little bit above that high. If you look at this on a faster time frame, there was one right there on the S&P today. Buyers once, buyers twice, traps, and back down again, right? So we got that pattern, right, to short this thing back down. Now remember, when I'm going against the overall directional bias on the 60-minute, this is a half-size position. It's a quarter-size position, right? It might be a zero-size position if you're brand new to this stuff. The good news is, if you can pick a reversal at this high, you don't need a very big position because oftentimes this thing will tumble really, really hard like it did today. So the first way to short this thing as we go higher is a crown reversal. Now, sometimes we don't get this. Sometimes it pops up and it V tops right back down again. Now watch closely on this. These can be really tricky, but man, they're some of the easiest ways to make money if you're patient enough to wait for it. Remember, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know how far that thing will go. So I'm not gonna short into it, right? That's just suicide in a market like this. But if I can get, if I can get this thing to V top and begin to grind back down again, uh, 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 now, now we know how to make money with this. Now here's the problem. When the market V top, and grinds down like this, this is going to drive you nuts because you're going to think you're going to miss this whole entire move. Watch closely. Draw a trembling off that low, 
pin it up around that high and then look left find some prior swings up here and you want that bull trap above that high we need a bull trap off of that high this is just like a crown reversal except again i call these v tops what they are right they v top off that high and again you'll know this you'll know this is the right one when it grinds down that grinding down like that and that bull trap that bull trap that move right above that prior swing and of course in the free video classes we talk about how to time the entry on that with the right signal candle closing below the 21 ema and again half size position quarter size position so those are the two types of reversal patterns i'm looking for crown reversals and v tops both of them are using traps now i know a lot of you guys made money on traps right bear traps and some bull traps today i know most folks watching right now you've taken my free video classes you've learned a lot of these setups already but if you're watching for the first time right now this might be a brand new language for you what the heck is a bull trap a v top a crime reversal this could be all brand new to you but don't you worry i teach all of these entry patterns i have hundreds of examples i have a lot of examples of this specific V top pattern all taught in a lot more detail in our free video classes I'll put a link up top here for you don't you worry I'll hook you up I'll put a link up top there grab that link that popped up there and take that free trading course because the strategy I teach in that short video series will teach you a stupidly simple trick we use in our members trade room to know exactly where the best winning trades are gonna be each day then I want to help you start making money on your own so I'll teach you four my favorite entry patterns you'll learn Learn traps you'll learn failures if you're tired of missing the best trades if you're struggling to find winning trades each day hit the link take that free course it'll give you an easy roadmap to find lots of winning trades let me do in our trade room and also keep in mind too if you can't grab a link up top there I'll put all the important links we talked about tonight in the description of the YouTube video. I'll put the free class links down there. I'll put our trade room links. We trade together every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. I'll put that information down there as well. And also too, I post a lot of updates, chart updates, psychology updates on Twitter during the day. If you're on Twitter, give me a follow. I'll put all the details in the description of the video. So now you know where to learn more about things like crown reversals and those V tops, right? Those V tops. Don't chase after it. Now, how would we buy a breakout? Because in all reality, we're a bull market, right? How would I buy a breakout? Well, here's the thing. I have to get enough momentum and then pull back. We talked a lot about this last night, right? Last night we talked about if we went higher, break out, pull back, right? Think about that pattern, break out, pull back. And now let's do the same thing up here. Okay, same, same idea. Now, the hard part about this is, is that I really can't buy it as we're going higher. It's not a great spot to buy as we're going higher because, again, we're running right into that big high. So the hardest part about going long right now, if we go higher, is, is we have to let them kind of push that high, push through it. Then what I can do is, is look for that breakout pullback. Let me saw right here. Look back here. Look what happened back here. Big breakout, big pullback, and then look what happened right there. What happened right there? The bears came in and they got caught, right? They got trapped. That is the sequence we want for tomorrow. Now think about, put these both together here now, right? Put them both together. Strong run up. Rookies come in. They chase after it. They get trapped, right? They get trapped for that crown reversal pattern and back down again. Or that V-top pattern, okay? Look left now. And this whole area becomes a support level. Okay, now remember, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm pretty good at this stuff, but I don't, I don't know how far that pullback will go. We're not in the business of picking the bottom on that move. We do know, though, is in an overall bull market, if I see a nice strong push out of this range, again, a lot of resistance up here, so I'm not going to buy up there. Look for that reversal off the high. Then let's trap in some of these rookies, right? Let's bring this thing down now and get the bears coming in once, twice, just like back there. Get those bears coming in once, twice, and let's light those stops up. Think about where their pain is. This is a failure pattern. Now, in the free trading class, we call these two try failures. Okay, all I'm doing is, is I'm trying to trap. I'm trying to trap the sellers, the rookie sellers. Horrible place to be short, right? You don't want to short that. You want to short up here. Okay, sell high, don't sell low. Okay, we all, we all know that, right? I know it's easy to say, but difficult to do in real time. Now, watch closely. As the market squeezes higher, where does the market want to go? 
wants to retest that high. How do we get in here? We look for a bear trap. All right, we'll talk a lot about these all week this week, a bear trap, okay? Simple pattern, higher high in price, trap a little low. Okay, look over here, look over here. Failure, bear trap, okay? These happen over and over and over again. Deep pullback, bears once, bears twice, failure. Squeeze those stops. As it goes higher, higher high in price, trap right below that low. These are pretty easy. Once you get through the free video classes, you're going to see these everywhere now. Once you see them a couple times, you can't unsee them, right? So again, failure, failure, bear trap, bear trap. This thing repeats over and over again. It's part of the what we call the price action cycle. You guys learn this in the free video course. So if we go higher here, I love the idea of combining a crown reversal. Again, I'm not going to buy up there, right? But if we can get that thing to push and we pull back, trap those bears in with that, again, basically a breakout pullback that we saw this morning on that deep pullback after that news breakout. All right, guys? That's the game plan as we go higher. Now, we can possibly double them up tomorrow, right? Up top and down bottom again. Now, down bottom is a lot more desirable area to be a buyer, but that will also come with a bit of difficulty. Let's talk about this now on the NASDAQ. I see you, Nazi. I'm coming to you, buddy. I'm coming. Okay, over on the NASDAQ, 60-minute time frame, we're bullish overall. Last time we talked about how we use the 21 EMA. If you missed last night's video, you'll want to go back and watch that because we talked about how the 21 EMA keeps us focused on the best direction, and it was it was pretty accurate if you go back and look at it from what we talked about last night. Let's now go to the tick chart here now, and on the tick chart here on the NASDAQ, there are very similar clues. The first clue is that big move higher, right? There's that big, big NVIDIA monster move going higher. We know where the buyers want to go, right? They want to go take out that high, in this case, at the 18,121 half. What else do we know? We also know we get a new spike, right? Strong news spike. News spike is right there, right? Haven't quite reached it yet, but we're only a few points away from it. And the final thing here, of course, is that trading range. I'm a big believer that once you know how to use ranges, you're almost unstoppable. You're virtually unstoppable because once you understand how ranges work, for example, range rotations, range breakouts, range breakout pullbacks, right? Breakout into measuring lag. That's one more thing we talk about in our free video classes. Anytime we see a range breakout, like a breakout leg becomes a measuring leg. The bottom line is there is a ton of resistance up overhead. Again, we're bullish overall. Nobody's debating that. But this is just a really difficult spot for me to want to be a buyer unless we get that boom, right? That big breakout. Then I like the idea, right? Then I love the idea, right? If we get that big breakout, get that pullback again, like we saw on the S&P, again, we don't trap, we don't, we don't pick the bottom, we trap the bears in and we go up and we look for those bear traps, right? Over and over again, rinse and repeat, right? So breakout, pullback, and again, this could be a crown reversal. This could be that, that V top reversal, and as we pull back, we trap those bears in, squeeze them, and back up to retest the high. That's why I say, right, not as easy tomorrow, but still, I think it's still a pretty easy game plan. As long as we just do our job tomorrow morning, we'll probably be okay. Now, let's talk about going lower, okay? This could get pretty aggressive real fast. And the reason I say that is because of range. Whenever we have a range, ranges love to rotate back and forth, and they can get pretty aggressive, right, as they, as they rotate, as we saw uh, this afternoon. So we really got to be aware of, 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 of that potential. I like the, in fact, I love the idea of getting price going lower, like back over here, right, trapping in some bears and squeezing back up again. As we're going lower, I can sell as we're going lower. Remember, anything we short right now is a half size position, right? It's a smaller position size. If we end up running lower here, how would I short on the way down? I want to sell as high as I possibly can, right? And to do that, I'm going to do it with what is called, in this case, a bull trap. These are very, very simple patterns, right? It's a lower low in price. Again, you'll learn about, about trap patterns in our free video classes. A lower low in price, a move just above the prior high, and a strong, red, in this case, red signal candle closing firmly below that 21 EMA. That will be a bull trap during that pullback. So keep an eye on that as we're going lower. Now, as we take out that low, 
you know this already, right? You know the game plan. Now, we're not going to pick the bottom. Of course not, right? We're going to make sure we wait for the price to pull back. Picking bottoms is rookie mistakes. We know that by now, right? You're not a rookie anymore. You're watching these videos now. We go one. We go two. Remember, no, no, remember, 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 remember. Hold on, hold on. Sellers want to sell high, right? Sellers want to sell high. So when I trap in sellers, right? When I trap in sellers, I want to see one try short, higher price short, right? I want to see one try short, higher price short, right? Sellers want to sell high. In order for us to trap in sellers, we need higher highs, right? Higher highs. Now, uh, we, we mentioned this last night, right? I would love what we call a crown reversal, right? I would love a bear trap below that low. That would be fantastic. We don't need the bear trap below the low, right? But it was sure, I sure I sure as heck wouldn't complain about it, right? We're not we're not very bearish in the short term right now. So we don't need that. Right? We wanted that crown reversal back here because we're so bearish there in the short term. So long story short, if we get that deep pullback, again, think about those sellers want to sell high, right? They pull back once, they go higher, they pull back twice, and the reason why I do this is because now we know where their stops are, right? And now we can use their stops as fuel, right? One of my first mentors told me this a long time ago. He said, guys, the easiest way to make money is to know the long-term direction, right? In this case, the 60-minute time frame, and then trap inexperienced traders at support levels on the wrong side of it, right? Write that down. Once you know the overall direction, it's pretty simple, right? Our job is is to trap inexperienced traders. That's the way the markets work, right? It's just experienced traders, unfortunately, taking the money from the inexperienced traders. That's just the way the markets work. Our job is to know the overall direction and trap inexperienced traders at, in this case, support levels, right? Because that's against that. That's the overall direction on the other side of that moving average and and basically squeeze their stops, right? Squeeze their stops and fi and fill our bank accounts ultimately, right? So now we know what that looks like. Now as it goes higher, we know what to do, right? We look for a bear trap pattern like that, right? It's a higher high in price. And usually, and we talked about this last night, but I'll say it again, but usually the best ones, they're going to barely miss the pullback to the moving average, right? Those are usually the best ones. The best ones will usually barely miss the pullback. Then we'll get that higher high in price. And then we'll go just a little bit below that prior swing, right? Just like that. Okay, so this is the sequence we look for as we pull back, right? That kind of that deep, deep pullback. It's called a two try failure patterns, right? You guys learn these in the free video classes. And then, of course, you got your bear trap going higher. All right. Now, as we see a lot of times, a lot of times this pullback is really, really strong. And we know that the underbelly of the trading range sometimes will hold and try to go lower right? It happens a lot. This is very common, okay? These double bottoms are, well, I'll tell you right now, they're one of my favorite trades in a bull market. So what happens oftentimes is, is we'll get them run down, we'll get the bears trapped in, we'll get some profit out of the trade, we'll get our one-to-one, -one, we'll move our stop to point of entry, we'll make money on the trade, but now for whatever reason, the strength of that move down, the bears come in, they whack this thing right back down again, and they retest the low. Okay, now these can be scary at first because, you know, to an inexperienced trader, this seems like, oh my, is this a reversal? It's not. It's not, all right? It will take a lot more than that for this to be a reversal. Look at that 60-minute time frame, right? That's a, that's a very big, big move up. A little more than that to be a full-blown reversal. What usually happens, though, is, is, well, when I was a rookie, I would confuse this as a reversal. So sure enough, what I would do is say, oh, we're reversing now. Now I'll get short here. Uh, uh no, right? I don't want to sell down here. But we don't want to sell low. We want to sell high. If we're going to sell, sell there, right? Again, not my favorite trade today because, again, the channel and, of course, the overall bull market. But I'm hoping that if we do get the bears short in that thing, I can then trap in these rookies, right? All the rookies who now think this is a reversal and they can't quite keep their impulses under control. You know, impulse control is such an important part of trading, right? Because it almost feels like, at least for me, when I was a rookie, it would almost feel like there was something else that took over my hand and made me get in. It was a combination of FOMO and emotion, right? Anyway, so this traps a lot of rookies in, like back here, right? Who's selling down there? Who's selling down there, right? Horrible place to be a seller. Hopefully, we can trap those bears in and squeeze them for, again, we call these double bottom reversals. Now, if you're if you're a member with me in the trade room, you know we love these double bottom, these retest trades, right? They're very, very good because, again, everyone gets roped in. These are areas where everyone is a buyer, right? Every 
everyone is a buyer. The buyers are buying because that's what buyers do in a bull market. And then once those bears get stopped out, they're buyers because that's the way you get out of a short position. All right? They double bottom reversal. Don't confuse double bottoms for a full-blown reversal. And then the least, right, the least, the least attractive trade is the V bottom, right? You know this already, right? We don't really want the V bottom. We don't want this thing to bounce and go right back up again. But you got to have a plan for it, right? You got to have a plan for it. But make sure you're ready for it. If it pops off that low and begins to grind and grind and grind, okay, that grind is the giveaway. We then go out, draw a trend line off the high, bring it down to that low. And then what do we do? We look left, always, always look left, find some prior swings, and you want that first test off the low, all right? I had a number of students this morning who took it like this, mark off that high, right? Mark off that low, right? Find that, find those prior swings and grab that first test off of that low, right? By the way, good job on that this afternoon to all the students who took that, right, this afternoon, right? So same idea, right? V top, V bottom is off the low. Don't chase it higher. Draw off that trend line, right? Find that low and don't miss that first test off the low. This could be a bear trap like that one. You could also wait for the bears to get caught below the moving average, right? Below the moving average, trap the bears in for a failure pattern, right? Off the low of that channel as well. Whatever entry pattern you want to use off that low, but that's the V bottom, right? It V bottoms off that low, grinds, grinds. We draw nice to have the highs, bring it down to that low. We look left, find those prior swings, swings where traps live, get underneath the moving average, like over here, right? Under the moving average, get those bears trapped in below the EMA, squeeze their stops, and the run going higher. Now, one pretty cool thing about the pop, about, about the V bottom is that the V bottom leg and, and the final leg are oftentimes symmetrical, right? The V bottom leg and the follow-up leg are oftentimes pretty symmetrical, right? So the size of that kind of V bottom leg, size of the V bottom leg can then be applied, right, once you know the depth of that pullback. Right, that will give you a pretty good target going up overhead. Tomorrow's a Friday, remember, so you want to leave a little piece of that position open to run. Right, again, tomorrow, a Friday afternoons, they love to run. Now, one last thing, one last thing. We're bull, we're bull market overall. If I pull back underneath these prior swings here and I start seeing these bears come in and try to short it going lower, they try once and they try twice. This is also an option here for tomorrow. So during that pullback, right, during that pullback, if we don't get all the way down to that low here, and this requires a bit of patience and, and concentration, but if we see these bears, again, they're, they're going to try to run this thing back lower again, right? If they try once and they try twice, higher high in price, if I can get that trap in the trade room, we call this buying shallow pullback traps, right? A shallow pullback trap. It will probably happen right below that low right there. It'll go below that low. They won't be able to keep it going lower. The bears will try once. They'll try twice. They'll get the little bear trap right there. And back up we go from there, right? And again, we know where the market wants to go. Take out some of these measured moves. Take out some of these pendulum swings as we're going higher, right? Same idea on the S&P as well. If all we get, right, if all we get is underneath some of these swings right here, right? Shallow pullback, bears once, bears twice. Get that bear trap trap there because you need to buy as low as you can right there. All right, guys, we'll talk more tomorrow morning, of course, in the trade room. But this this is the overall game plan, right? This is the game plan now for tomorrow. Now, speaking of trade room, don't forget, tomorrow morning, I, I can't think of any better way to learn to trade than to come out, learn, and trade along. The easiest way to stay, start, start making money in these markets is to come out and trade it with me every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. I'll put all the important details in the description of the YouTube video. Any questions, comments, concerns, don't be afraid to call. Use live chat or send me an email. What a fantastic week this week. Now get out of here. Get, get a good night's sleep. Kick some butt tomorrow. Hopefully I'll see you sometime soon straight trade with us in the morning trade room um, here at School of Trade. Right, guys? Great job this week. Be well. Be nice to each other out there. And you better be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.